How's it going everybody? Uh, Tall Tesla Guy here. So uh, this is a video today that we've done before with our previous version of our Tesla Model Y, but uh, it's the first time we've reached it on our current version. So we have a 2022 Tesla Model Y like you guys know from our previous videos, and we finally reached 10,000 miles. Um, I don't have the balloons yet or anything like that, party hats, but we're pretty excited, uh, at least I am, I should say. It was uh, a great opportunity and we did it faster than before, but it was a great opportunity to really dive into what we loved about the car, what we wish would still change. And then uh, honestly, with everything going on, supply chain, gas prices, that sort of thing, uh, didn't save us any money. So sit back, relax, you guys are watching the Tall Tesla guy. So we took delivery back in February, uh, February of 22, just about March and right off the bat, the delivery experience was amazing. My previous Tesla Model Y that we had, we actually went and picked it up at the showroom. Uh, this one we didn't, it was actually delivered to us. We live in a location that didn't have a showroom. So they delivered it. The delivery experience was amazing. It was, uh, you know, touch free, pulled up, dropped it off, took a couple pictures. I looked around at it. And that was it. Now, luckily, I didn't have any problems with the car. We didn't have any mechanical issues when we started it up. I didn't have any panel gaps, paint defects, anything like that. At least nothing that I noticed in the beginning. So I was able to happily kind of, I don't know, drive away with it. I've heard stories of people that are still having issues, though I will say, I believe that their production process, whether it's coming from Giga Austin, still coming from the Fremont factory, or even the overseas factories that are, uh, you know, kind of taking off. I feel like their production process is so much better than it was, you know, certainly when the Model 3 came out back in 2017 or even or 2018, or even when the Model Y first came out, which we had our first one back in 2020. I mean, it's night and day the difference, I'd say. Um, I don't have any rattling inside. Like I said, no paint defects. Uh, I didn't have any panel gaps, any noticeable ones anyway, and everything just worked. Um, I'm sure they're not perfect. No car company is perfect. There are companies that build a million cars a year and still have problems, but I'll say that um, they're getting better. They're getting a lot better than they used to be. And you kind of expect that for the price point of the vehicle. I mean, now when we bought our car, it was much cheaper, but if you were to go on there and buy a Tesla Model Y today, you're looking plus north of $60,000, which is crazy for you know the type of vehicle it is maybe, but if you go on there today and buy it, you're looking north of $60,000. And that kind of gives you certain expectations as to what you should get, want to get, or feel like the car should do for you in a sense of, um, you know, certainly quality, but uh, structure, technology, all that kind of stuff. And I can say that uh, I'm happy with ours. Love it. Absolutely love it. Love it even more than I did before. I'll say that we had um, about eight months in between both of them, and I miss driving it. I really miss driving this this. Uh, you know, the car, it's just so much fun to drive, regen braking, the, you know, assistive cruise control, autopilot, that sort of thing, plus uh, the acceleration and just the comfort of the interior of the car. I just really enjoy it. So, I mean, I didn't really want to turn this into a top 10 list, but it's hard to not talk about some of the things that are just amazing with the car. You guys hear about it in every video nearly. I talk about this panoramic glass roof. Now, it happens to be a super rainy day. It's been raining for the past couple of days, but it seems like the past month. And I'll tell you, before the rain, though, it was sunny. And looking out there in the sun, you can see I have a car seat back there. My daughter just, I look back in the mirror, and she's just got her head up looking at the sun. Just really enjoy that part of it. It's hard to see the stars at night uh, just because it's so dark, the roof is. But outside of that, uh, it's amazing. We just really like, like the way it looks. We like the way it... Uh, you know, just kind of flows through. And honestly, I don't have any issues at all with the heat. Now, I'll put a little asterisk on that. You guys know I do not live in the South. I don't live in Florida, Texas, um, Arizona, anything like that. I know people down there talk about it all the time. But I'll say that the way that the cabin air conditioning system works or the airflow system, it seems to create like a, a bubble around you as it moves. And I notice, you know, I've got about four inches maybe between my head and the roof. If you touch the roof with your hand when it's a super hot day, you can definitely feel the heat, no doubt. 
but it doesn't really get down to my head to make my head hot. Now, there are days where the sun is just glaring down on you and you can't seem to get away from it. Those are the days where it does seem a little bit warmer, though it doesn't feel warm around my face or anything like that. So it's kind of one of those odd things, but honestly, I wouldn't trade it in for anything. When I get in a non Model Y, I miss the fact that I don't have this roof. So I would never do anything to uh, cover it or anything like that. That's just not uh, not something that bothers me. So I can say I absolutely love the panoramic roof. Um, I talk about all the time too, it's almost like a broken record, is the regen braking, the acceleration. It's amazing in this car. It's just super great. Now I'm sort of in traffic here right now, so I can't kind of showcase it, but um, it just makes it fun to drive. Even if you're not racing people, which I don't, uh, I've got my wife and my daughter typically in the car driving normal speed. It's nice to be able to just kind of get out there when you cut in, when you when you drive out into traffic, stuff like that. When you get on the highway, you know, putting it in, uh, you know, sort of autopilot and and just kind of running with it. It's just great. It takes some of the stress off your shoulders a little bit. You can kind of focus on the road and and just kind of uh, I don't know, enjoy the ride a little bit more, which is nice. Now. You guys know it's not full. It's not fully uh, autonomous driving. Um, I've never said that it was. I know Elon sort of alluded to it, but it's definitely not that. So you know you can't say that uh, you just put it in autopilot and go. No, I don't have the full self driving. I did not pay for that. It is not full self driving at the moment anyway. So I didn't go down that road. But um, the enhanced autopilot's amazing. I just I, it's really enjoyable. So I definitely enjoy that part of it. And then I want to talk about the space. Um, I threw a couple shorts together talking about the frunk. You know, honestly, we have this soft sided cooler in there. We go to the store, buy ice cream, anything we need to heat cold, we put it in there. And when we get home, it's still cold. Uh, it's just an amazing storage space. Now, I know that's an EV thing and that's becoming, uh, you know, sort of the norm for EVs. In fact, they're getting bigger and bigger as they move through it. Uh, you know, the Ford F-150 Lightning, the, the Rivian has a big one, stuff like that. But no doubt the frunk is just an amazing place to store stuff. Especially if you get something that, uh, you know, uh, some sort of cooler, some sort of container that you can put things in so it doesn't roll around in there. And then the back, uh, behind the seats, the space back there is immense. And then on top of that, you have the subwells. There's two of them in my car. I don't have the seven seater. Uh, with the regular five seater, you have two sub trunks back there. And it just gives you place to put more and more stuff. Um, just stuff you got to bring with you. Like I said, we have a baby. She's a baby. She's three now. But, um, we have a lot of stuff we bring with her and then stuff that's nice to have, jackets, stuff like that. It's great to have storage spaces back there. And then every once in a while you'll see him pop up back there. My dog, Ben, he's a big, large golden retriever, fits great back there. He wanted to come with us to uh, pick up my daughter, so that's what we're doing today. And it's just, uh, it's great to have the space. It's that stuff that I didn't have in the sedan that we had previous, and it's stuff that uh, I missed when I didn't have this car. So it's an amazing, amazing, uh, you know, kind of, kind of, there's an amazing amount of space in the 76 cubic feet, I think it is, in this car, which is just fantastic. It's great that you can store stuff. Now, I know if you fold the seats down, you some people put like a piece of plywood in here, two by four, stuff like that. I don't use this as much of a utilitarian type of vehicle. It's more of my uh, daily driver. And then on top of that, I want to take care of it. So I don't do that, but I know you can, which is nice, nice to know, nice to have. I also opted for the tail hitch. Now, it costs a thousand dollars to get that tail hitch when you order the car but what they do is they sink it into the actually the range of the vehicle so when you do have a trailer in there it gives you a lot more accurate range for the car it also puts it up on the on the screen for you it doesn't uh you know trick or it, it doesn't beeps thinking that somebody right behind you stuff like that it's nice to do it but i know you can get it cheaper i know you can get one for a couple hundred dollars if you did it outside of tesla i just did it to get it done and get it uh get it rolling ahead of time so that we had it uh, had it when i got it and then if i ever needed to if i ever needed to uh you know haul a trailer i can always do that I'm not going to be pulling a boat with this. Um, I've seen people put trailers on there, camping trailers. You lose about half the range by doing that, if not more. So you can get maybe 100 miles versus the 300 or so that you're going to get with a typical, without a trailer, I guess. Uh, so I haven't needed to, but it's nice to know that it's there. And I'll say, like, um, they're constantly doing stuff to update the car, update the technology. One of the coolest features of 
Tesla is the over the air updates, um, which is also something that's becoming the norm with EVs, but Tesla kind of pioneered it. Uh, it seems like they were the first ones to have it. And basically what they're doing is making changes, bug fixes, all that kind of stuff to the screen, to the navigation, to the infotainment system. And they do it on the fly. In fact, you plug it in the car, or at least I do at night. And when I wake up in the morning, sometimes I'll get this alert that says, hey, you got an update, don't want to download it. And I, I hit download 10, 15 minutes later, while it's parked in the garage, it downloads its update. It's almost like uh, opening up a present. You get in the car the next day. It's got a list of everything that they did to it or changed, and it's kind of neat to see what they're uh, kind of what they're working on. So, over-the-air updates are amazing for sure. But honestly, looking back on the 10,000 miles, looking back on the last eight months owning the car, I guess two years in, in whole owning the Tesla, kind of going into the EV lifestyle, I can say I absolutely love it. I miss it when I'm not driving it. I do not miss driving my gas vehicle by any means, not even a stretch remotely. And we've taken it on a couple of longer trips. Um, the supercharger network is amazing, by the way. And I never worry about range or anything like that. Range anxiety is something that I, I just don't have, especially after having it for as long as I do. And it's just uh, an amazing experience. And I really, you know, really enjoy it. So I would say that I was converted to an EV uh, when I first got my Tesla, the first one, and then it's something that I'm gonna stick with. I, I really enjoy it. In fact, my wife is, is converted. It's an EV convert, which is nice now too. So she's excited about it. We even talk about having uh, having two in our household, which was something we kind of shied away from before. So absolutely amazing. If you're thinking about pulling that trigger, jump on top of it, uh, jump in there and get it. Certainly he's not uh, gonna be dropping the price any. And then on top of that, with the e potential EV credit coming, who knows if it actually will. Um, I would say that uh, he's probably gonna raise the price. So. If you're thinking about doing it, jump in there, pull that trigger. You're gonna love it, not regret it. I never regretted it or haven't yet anyway. So uh, I hope you guys are having a fantastic day, week, month so far. Uh, you're able to get out there and enjoy yourselves a little bit. Hopefully things are calming down in your world. If you're not, I hope you're able to uh, balance through it. But uh, thanks, as always, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for subscribing and watching. I really appreciate it. And uh, as always, this one's for mom. Thanks a lot, everybody.